Okay, we are back here on Sportsline talking Super Bowl 49. What a finish it was the other night. That last call will be remembered in infamy, I guess, in Seattle for many days, many months, many years to come. Pete Carroll getting second guess there. And obviously in New England, it's a play by Malcolm Butler that will go down in history as the Patriots win another Super Bowl championship. Megan Alexander covered the Super Bowl for Inside Edition. Megan, a good friend of the program. Megan, how are you? It's been a long week, I'm sure, for you. But did you get to enjoy yourself at all out there in Phoenix? Oh, hey, Steve, always. I tell you what, Super Bowl week is like no other. It is incredible. It is jam-packed. Uh, it moves so fast, and yet, you know, we finally get to this incredible game on Sunday, this matchup between these two teams. That, I mean, we had a game. You know, you think of last year it was a complete blowout yep. uh, between the Seahawks and the Broncos. We had a game this year, and it came down to the wire. It uh, doesn't get any better than that. So uh, it was one incredible ride. We've actually been fortunate in recent years, with the exception of last year. We've had a lot of really good finishes in the Super Bowl in recent years. But this one... The way it ended was unlike any others. Uh, take me to the field in the final minutes of that game. First, the Patriots rally, then the incredible curse catch. What was the feeling like in the stadium at field level in those final few minutes? Yeah, well, you know, part of my job in covering that, the Super Bowl for Inside Edition, is, you know, I'm balancing between the action on the field and also trying to chase celebrities sure. and get their comments on the big game. But we do go out into uh, just a couple of seats off the field into the lower stands for the final two minutes of the game. So I was there, and my perspective, I think you've heard other people talk about this, is there were more Seahawks fans there than Patriots fans, the weather having to do with that and so forth, uh, proximity to Phoenix, and a bunch of other things. But those last two minutes when we were making our way down the field, and I say we, so I'm born and raised in Seattle, <laughs> a lot of people know that, uh, as the Seahawks are making their way down the field, the energy there was so incredible. But, Steve, at, at those last 20 seconds when they decided to throw instead of give the ball to Marshawn Lynch and let him run, everyone was in shock. I and mean, I almost feel like the Patriots waited a couple of seconds before they reacted, the right. Patriots fans. Um, it was a very traumatic final 20 seconds of a Super Bowl game. A lot of mixed emotions in the stands. Yeah, it was amazing. And you're right. It almost seemed like Patriots players didn't know if they could celebrate yet because it was almost like, wait a second, did that actually just happen? It, it was such an amazing sequence of events. And since you brought it up, be, being a Seattle girl and a Seahawks homer in this case, when you talk to people in Seattle, family, friends today, I mean, how long does this live with Pete Carroll? How long does it live with the Seahawks, that call and that missed opportunity? Sure. And listen, I, I say that, you know, with complete respect for the Patriots and the fact that this was such an incredible matchup. And that was why the game was so enjoyable, because both teams were so good. Um, the feeling, I think you, you have read a lot of the publications and sports blogs, as I have, today and yesterday, you know, the feeling is that the Seahawks, they have such an incredible energy because of Pete Carroll. They buy into his philosophy, his hype, his excitement. You know, you often hear them chant, you know, we're all we got, we all we, we're all we need. I think it's that sense of, okay, where do they go from here? Are they going to continue to buy into it and to, you know, what this team is all about and sort of that young, honestly, high school energy that we all love watching. Right. That it is what, who the Seahawks are. Um, you know, I, Russell Wilson tweeted today, at 26 years old, I won't allow one play or one moment to find my career. I will keep evolving motivation. 67,000 likes to that tweet. <laughs> He's a leader on that team, Steve, so I wonder if after everything is settled, if we will indeed see the Seahawks come back better than ever next year, uh, it remains to be seen. Yeah, that's the challenge. That message has been so on point from Pete Carroll down throughout that locker room now for three or four years that when you have this bump in the road, 
do people continue that same level of buy into their coach after a play when his call may very well have cost them? You were down there after the game. I don't know whether you were in locker rooms exactly. I saw you at least attempted to try to talk to Marshawn Lynch. How did that go? Who else did you talk to? And what was the feeling, I guess, of despair on one side and complete jubilation on the other side after the game? You know, a couple observations. I hung out right outside of the locker room after the game, as did some of my other sports reporters. And Marshawn Lynch came out pretty quickly. And, you know, I had to try to talk to him. Of course, his reputation is, you know, 99% of the time I knew he wasn't going to talk. He sang to me. He sang something to the effect of, I'm in love with the lamb, although don't quote me on that. And then he proceeded to push down my photographer's camera and a photographer's camera across the way and sort of sing his way out of the stadium. Now, say what you will about Marshawn Lynch. I, I think, listen, Steve, it's the Super Bowl. A lot of people say, oh, it's just a game. It really isn't. 118 million people tuned into this game. The NFL is a billion-dollar nonprofit industry business, which is mind-boggling in itself. It's nonprofit. But think about the intensity and the pressure on these guys. Something like that, I kind of go, you know what? I'm not saying it's okay. But I don't blame Marshawn Lynch. That was such a big moment, and everyone was so confused as to the decision that was made. So, listen, it is what it is. Two other things I observed, Steve. Uh, One, Richard Sherman took a long time to come off the field. We were waiting for him to come off the field. He stayed out there, and he shook Patriots' hands. And whatever he was doing, I couldn't see, but he did not wander into the locker room for quite a, a, a lot long amount of time as did Russell Wilson. You probably saw that photo of Russell Wilson and Tom Brady hugging. Sure. They evidently talked for a good amount of time. He finally made his way into the locker room. So when you see scenes like that, yes, there was, you know, excitement and, you know, pure bliss from the Patriots. But the Seahawks took their time to also sort of take in what is the Super Bowl. And it's an interesting scene behind the scenes when you see that go down. Now, you have a lot of respect for the players when they take that time to really talk to each other. Yeah. Megan, we have about 45 seconds, so this has to be quick here, but I want to get through a couple things. One, quick impression of the halftime show. Oh, the best I have ever seen. My fifth Super Bowl, I liked it better than Madonna and Beyonce. Was it Missy Elliott or Katy Perry that sold the show? Katie Perry, 100%. Okay. I've heard different sides from from both, but I think they were both very good. And final thing, since you've been to five Super Bowls, I've been to several myself, how did Phoenix do as a host city? Oh, fantastic. Warm weather, friendly people, hospitable, great location. Um, they were fantastic. Phoenix is right up there with New Orleans, which is my personal favorite. Yeah, New Orleans, hard to beat that no. for a Super Bowl. The location, the food, all that stuff. It's just a party atmosphere the entire week. But Phoenix has done well. They had Super Bowl 49, which was an epic finish with the Giants and Patriots. Now Super Bowl 49 with an epic finish with the Patriots upending the Seahawks. Megan Alexander, thanks so much for your time. Get some sleep, will you? I really need to. Thanks, Steve. (laughs) Thanks, Megan. (laughs) we got to take our final break. We'll be back after this.